Hi, this is Jana Whitley. I'm the author of Cuddly Cacti Crochet 12 Sweet Succulents to Stitch and Snuggle. And I'm going to be showing, demonstrating how to make the uh, Silver Ball Cactus Amigurumi, which is included in the kit materials. So, let's get started. Here's the unopened box. And you'll need... Um, the things that are included in your kit, you've got your stuffing, uh, the 3.5 millimeter hook, which is also called an e-hook, and uh, you've got your kind of a terracotta uh, yarn for the pot, the dark brown for the, the dirt in the pot, and you've got two shades of green. You've got uh, kind of a dusty green and then a lighter green. And this light green actually looks a bit different on camera um, than it does in real life, but you can see there's a, a little bit of difference there. And then we've got uh, kind of a a beige for the uh, little flower that goes on top, and we need a little bit of red for that flower as well. So here's the red. Also, you'll need the eyes that are included. We've got the six millimeter safety eyes. And then the, the white uh, backings on the in there, and a little bit of black embroidery floss, and then there's a needle included for making the face details. The things that you'll need to provide are you'll need a pair of scissors. I like using small, sharp embroidery scissors. scissors. Um, so these are about four inches long. Um, also, and then uh, you'll want some pins. Uh, these are these have large hearts on the end so they don't disappear into the crochet fabric like dressmaker pins would. Okay, and I'm uh, for this demo, instead of using the kit provided hook, I'm going to use my own hook which is made by Clover. Um, it's got a comfort grip on it, and since I do a lot of crochet, this is a lot more comfortable for me. Um, Alright, so, and here's the book. You'll need the book, of course, because it has the instructions in it. Uh, we're going to be on page uh, 44 to start. Um, this The book is quite small, so I like to put in one of these office clips to hold it open on the binding, so it doesn't want to keep full, uh, closing. So put it right there on the binding like so. Now the, the text is quite small in here too so if you're having trouble reading it uh, I suggest uh, taking it to a copy center and having it uh, blown up. Uh, probably about a, a hundred percent or well sorry uh, more like two hundred percent. Okay so we're gonna start doing the plant and you'll see uh, this will be alternating rows so let's get started with dusty green. We're going to chain 13. And I'll take this nice and slow, just in case uh, we've got some beginners here. Um, so let's unwrap our yarn. So go into the middle here, and we're going to look for, for an end. Hmm, it is. It is not making itself known to me. That is a stubborn bit. Okay, so, well, how about, how about I pause and see if I can find this? Okay, so I was able to find this loose end, and I'm wrapping the middle. Now, at this point, you might want to roll it into a ball so it doesn't get tangled. Um, but I think I'll leave mine just loose like this. And uh, it's a good idea to put it in maybe like a small bowl. Hang on. So here's a... There's a bowl I've got. I'm going to put the yarn in there so it'll feed out of there easily. Okay, so we're this is we've got our 
little tail hand here and we're going to start with chaining so uh, if you've never done crochet the first thing you need to start with if you're making a chain you need to start with a slip knot and they don't tell you that in the instructions they just assume that that you know that so so let's make a slip knot and here's what we're going to do so you're going to lay the um, this tail end in your in your in your uh, left hand if you're if you this is for right-handed instructions uh, so this is your non-dominant hand you're going to take your dominant hand and you're going to take the working end of the yarn the working end is is coming from the ball of the yarn or the uh, skein and you're going to create a loop with the working end laying on top of the tail so there's your loop now the easiest thing to do is just take your hook go through that loop grab the working end like that and see it forms kind of a pretzel and you're and then you're gonna hold both ends the tail end and the working end hold them securely and you're just gonna pull that loop until the slip knot forms and then you're gonna pull the working end to snug it onto the onto the hook like so so now you've got these two ends coming off you've got your little tail end here probably about four inches and then you've got your working end which is what you're going to be crocheting with now to start crochet uh, you're going to hold the hook in your dominant hand so I'm right-handed I like to hold it like this like a pencil um, and then to, uh, with my non-dominant hand my left hand I'm going to use that as kind of tension control to feed the yarn to the hook so this is how I like to hold it I uh, so, you know, if you've ever done shadow puppets and you've got your dog, right? Like if this is a dog and, and you use, move the pinky, right, to be the dog's mouth. So that pinky is going to do a lot of work to help uh, regulate your tension. So I put the working yarn through that pinky this way. And then I wrap it under, around, and over the backs of my fingers like this. And now as I wiggle my pinky, I can either stop or release that yarn and it'll help me to uh, regulate my tension all right now I want the yarn to come over my index finger and I'm going to hold my index finger like this because I'm going to be wiggling this as well to kind of um, regulate how much yarn is in the space between my thumb and index finger with my thumb and my tallest finger here I'm going to pinch the tail end beneath the slip knot. So this is how it looks. And so all a lot of the, the yeah, I'm going to be using my hook to wrap, and it's called yarning over. So I and for the way I do it is I uh, go under and then over, and then I slide the hook end through, and then I pop it through that loop. And that's a chain. Uh, now some I've seen some methods where they actually do it the opposite way like so like they go behind and then like that but the way I've learned is this way so either way will work but whatever you, whichever method you use to be consistent okay so again we're gonna do another chain and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take the the hook we're gonna um, under and give it a twist and then just slide the shaft through that loop working loop the working loop is the one that's um, on your hook when you finish a, a stitch and at this point you or if you've not done this before you want to practice I would recommend just practicing doing like chaining over and over to get to get comfortable with managing your tension uh, because you want your chains to be not super tight but not super loose just just you want these loops to be just big enough that the that the that the head of the hook will just pop through um, you don't want it so tight that you have to like uh, wrestle it through okay but you don't also don't want it so loose that that it's twice the size of the hook 
Okay, so with that in mind, if, if you've done after you've done some practicing, let's start with the pattern. So again, we got our slip knot. We got our yarn tensioned in the non-dominant hand, and we're gonna yarn over and chain 13. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and um, there's ten. But notice as I'm chaining, I'm using these the the thumb and this finger to kind of um, inch up so that I'm always keeping the fingers close to the hook so that this is coming down. So then I'm going to do three more. One, two, three. So this, this non-dominant hand is doing a lot of stuff over here. It's the pinky's wiggling, this finger's kind of moving to provide this space, this space for the hook to maneuver. And these fingers are moving. Okay, so there's 13. We are going to now. Um, that's the let's call the foundation chain. It's, it says FC in the book. For row one, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So single crochet. Uh, first of all, okay, second chain from the hook. Now, notice that I remember I said that this the loop on the hook after you finished. A stitch that's your working loop you don't count your working loop you're gonna count this the one right before this is your last chain so this is like zero and then this is one and then two so you want to put the hook through the second chain from the hook so there's one two you're gonna insert it into that V like so so there's one two you insert it through now for a single crochet, you're going to yarn over like you did with a chain. You're going to pull it through just that chain, not the working loop. So you pop it through and then you've got two loops on your hook. You've got the working loop and then the new yarn over, like so. And then to finish the single crochet, you're going to yarn over again. And then you're going to pull it through both loops. And that's your first single crochet. Let me try that. Let me do that again. So you're going to go into the next chain and you're going to yarn over, pull it through just that chain. So there's two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over again and you're going to pull it through both loops on the hook. Okay, let's do how many more do we need to do? It's supposed to be 12 across, so we're just going to keep going until we get to the end of the chain. So I'll go into the chain, yarn over, pull through once, yarn over again, pull through both. Go to the next chain, yarn over, pull through the chain, yarn over again, pull through both. And you can see it's forming these V's on top of the work. And you'll be able to count those V's to count your how many stitches you've got, how many single crochet. So there's another one, and another one. And again, I'm, move, I'm using my two fingers here to kind of wiggle, to move along as I go, to hold the work close to the hook. And this kind of gets curly. It just naturally does that. So you can pinch it out of the way, kind of flatten it as you go to kind of set the stitches. Like think of it as like ironing the stitches, but you know, with a real iron because that would melt this acrylic yarn. Okay, so then when we get you'll see the one where we get back to the slip knot, there's a ch the last chain. We're gonna go through there. Alright. Now we can count to make sure we've got the right amount. See there's there's our working loop right here. So that's zero. And then you can see this this V here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that's the end of row one. Okay, I'm gonna put that back in there, tighten that up. So and then we are going to switch to light green and then chain one and then turn. So here's my light green. Let me get that. Oh, that one's easier to find. See, I'm just going to pull that right out and it um, comes 
out. Okay, so to switch color, here's where we, we switch color. So I'm not going to cut this yarn. We want to keep that intact because we're going to be swapping back and forth between the two colors. So I'm going to take a tail of about four inches. I'm going to fold it like so. I'm going to take my hook and grab that folded it bit. And I'm going to pull it through like it's a chain. So there's my chain one with that new color. And then I'm going to turn the work. So what it means when the turning. So this is this is the you're looking at the right side of the work. The work that was facing you when you created it. Now we're gonna flop it like so. Like that. So now you're looking at the the uh, wrong side of the stitch. Um, as you can see it's a little bit different. Like um, these these look like V's underneath the top side. The single crochet looks like V's. If we look at the back side, it looks like a pie symbol. You've got two little legs with a cross band on top. So this is the wrong side, and this is the right side, those V's. Okay, and I'm going to take the that uh, lighter green, and it says row two, I'm going to single crochet across. So now you're going to want to go in both loops so you're not gonna see there's that first chain that with the dusty with the or with the light green you don't you don't want to put your hook in this you want to go through that darker green and you're gonna put your hook through both loops and if you want if this is coming if this is kind of wanting to tug loose you can actually tie it to this tail down here in fact I think I'll do that so that it doesn't want to come loose so I'm gonna going to um, do myself a square knot and the way I always remember is right over left so I tuck that over pull it through and then right over left left over right makes a knot that's tidy and tight but when you've got two different colors it's easy because you just take one color and it's easy to remember okay so there's my square knot to secure that all right, let's get back to business. We're going to put that hook through both loops, like so. It's under both loops. See, there's a okay. So if we're holding it this way. This is this is my front loop, and then that's that's my back loop, putting over under both loops. And now we're going to grab that that um, lighter green. We're going to yarn over, pull through the loops. Yarn over again, pull it through both loops. Okay, so let's just go across. So again, go through the loops, yarn over, pull through, like so. Okay, we're gonna go to that third one. There's the V, go into the V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, pull through the loops. So now it's forming these um, lighter green stitches on top. Okay, so we're going to go through that under the V again, yarn over, pull through the, the stitch, yarn over, pull through both loops. Okay, there's another single crochet finished. And just keep going along that, the top of that row one. Again, making sure that we are working in both loops because sometimes. Uh, sometimes in my instructions, you will be instructed to work in back loops only or front loops only. So it's important that if I don't say, if I don't say back loops only or BLO or FLO, then you should always assume that you're working into both loops of single crochet. Okay, let's get that in focus. And there's the last one. So there's the last one just there before that turn and we're gonna go like so let's count make sure we got the right amount so not counting the working loop and then we go there's zero and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay perfect all right what does it say to finish up the row two chain one and turn so we're gonna wrap it, 
cool. Let's do the loop just once. There's our chain, and we're gonna flop it to turn it like. And I, you know, I've never figured out if there's a correct way to like, if you flop it this way or that way. Just kind of whatever feels more natural, I guess. Okay, and then we're going to. What are we gonna do? We're gonna make another row of this light green. We're gonna single crochet across, and then. So again, we're gonna. Don't work into that chain. We're gonna work into that first, or the last single crochet. Again, going through both loops. Okay, so I'll just do this one quickly, since we've gone over the single crochet. Last one, like right there. Okay, and you'll see it forms kind of this little rectangle so far. Now we are going to switch to dusty green before we chain one and turn. So again, I've got this, still got the dusty green attached. So I'm going to drop my light green, pick up the dusty green, and yarn over and pull it through. And don't pull it too tight because you don't want to like pucker the ends. Well, I mean, I guess if you pucker the ends, it'd be okay because eventually we're gonna gather them up anyways. But you know, just do it so that it it kind of rides along with the rows. All right, so there's our chain, and I'm gonna snug this up a little bit, and, and then we turn it, and we're going to for row four, we're gonna single crochet across again. So pretty easy at this point because we're just gonna do lots of single crochets and single crochet is really the the um, fount the you know it's really all you need to know for doing amigurumi because most everything you do when you're making amigurumi is done with single crochet and then increasing or decreasing that single crochets stitch Okay, so there's that, and then for row five, we're going to chain one and turn, and then for row five, we're going to do another row of this dusty green. Okay, and you'll want to count, I'm not counting, because it's, you know, I want to speed this along for you guys, but if you're a beginner, it's a good practice to count at the end of every row, because if you make if you accidentally skip a stitch or if you accidentally add an extra stitch then it's gonna start making your work look very strange and that and it's, then you'll have to might have to go back and rip out your stitches to fix it so it's better to just rip out one row than to have to rip back several rows okay so there's row, f uh, row five we're going to switch to light green and then chain one and turn. So drop the dark, dusty green, pick up the light green, chain one, turn, work across. Get a little more yarn going here. Okay. All right, and let's see, row five, and then, okay, that was row six. So we're doing row six or 25, we're gonna repeat rows two through five, five more times. So you're just basically making two rows of each color, like make, make, two, make uh, we're gonna make another row of the light green, switch to the dusty green, do two rows of that, and switch again until you have 25 rows. So um, rather than watching me do that back and forth and back and forth, I will go ahead and do that on my own and I will I will I will uh, continue filming when I'm at the end of row 25. So let me pause it. Okay, so um, 
We are continuing now with the silver ball cactus. We're on making the plant part. I just, uh, in the previous video, I showed you how to make the rows. Uh, we got up to about row six, and then I jumped ahead and finished up to row 25. And so the instructions say you should have uh, seven bands of the dusty green. So starting at the bottom, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then six bands of the light green. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, for the next row, for row 26, we're gonna do another uh, row of just the light green across. So we're gonna, you're gonna switch to light green. You're gonna single crochet across just like you did before with 12 single crochet. Okay, there we go. And it kind of it kind of twists up, but you know that's just the nature of crochet. Don't worry about that because we are gonna fold this in half now. Uh, we'll see. First, we're gonna chain one and then single crochet. So single crochet across again for row twenty-seven. Okay, there we go. Now, um, we're going to fasten off the light green and switch to the dusty green. So fasten off means that you're going to cut the, cut the yarn with about four inches. And then you're going to, see that working loop? You're going to pull that through so that it doesn't come undone. And then we're going to switch to green. Uh, there are sorry the dusty green um, and then we're gonna put the put the uh, hook through that last loop and then pull it through to chain one turn and then we're going to uh, work across again oh wait wait sorry um, we are gonna fold the work in half like so, so that the uh, foundation chain is behind row 27. We're going to single crochet through the next single, single crochet of row 27 and the first remaining loop of of the foundation chain. So, what that means is we're going to put the okay. So we're going to put the hook the hook through. You're going to start by putting it through this single crochet like you normally do, both loops. Then you're also going to put it through this first uh, spot. See, there's the there's our slip knot, right? So you're going to put it right uh, under the yarn next to there. And you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through both stitches. So you'll have two on the hook. And let's see, are we? I uh, just want to make sure we are. Um, we're single crocheting across. Okay, so yeah, so we're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then again, we're gonna go through the both loops, that dusty green, and then we're gonna go through the next foundation chain loop just there. Okay, so for the third one, we're going to go through both loops of the dusty green and go through that foundation chain. And so we should have um, let's see, 12 total. Okay. And so this is kind of sewing the ends together, is what we're doing, without having to sew it with a needle, because this goes a little faster than 
switching to a needle. Make sure you don't skip any because then you, when you get to the end you'll be like, whoa, they don't match up. I think I might have not counted right. There we go. All right, so one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so. And so then we're going to fasten off with the tail for sewing. So it turns tube inside out to hide seam. So here we go. We want to. So this is sewing. So uh, let's do about 12 inches of yarn. And then, so we've cut that, and here's our working loop. We're just going to pull that hook so that the working the cut end comes through. Okay, and now we're going to take and we're going to turn that the other side out so that. So now the seam is hidden on the inside. So there's the seam. And it's like that. So now I've got a tube. And you'll see here's the um, the ends where we did the color swapping. There's a little bit of a loop there for each time we color swap. Did the color swap. Okay. Um, and now. Um, we're not going to finish this just yet. Um, we're going to go to the, we're going to make the flower. We'll put this aside and let's start with the flower. So we're going to grab this very light beige yarn. Uh, I'm surprised, I'm actually surprised that it's not yellow in uh, real life. That uh, kind of a lovely canary yellow flower. So I'm surprised the kit yarn is a little very pale. Uh, but that's okay. You can swap out your own yellow yarn if you want. But this will this will look nice too, because there are white flowers in cactus world. Okay, so this one's fun because we are. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do a magic loop. It's uh, it's uh, it, yeah. It's shortened as ML in the book. Um, so a magic loop. Whew. Now this magic loop is super handy to know because you're gonna. If you're going to make a lot more amigurumi, you're always going to use it. Uh, okay, so you're going to take about three inches of the tail end and put it over your two fingers of your non-dominant hand, hold it with your thumb, and then you're going to wrap it over the top and then behind your fingers, and then bring it up over again to form an X. And then I'm going to hold it with my pinky behind so that it stays like that. So here's my, I've got this X. Now, I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to insert, I'm going to turn my hand towards me like this. I'm going to insert my hook under the first yarn and then I'm going to grab that second yarn, pull it under. Now this is the tricky part because I'm going to give it a little twist like that so that it, tw it twists around the hook. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that again. So there's my X, put my hook under, grab that working end, pull it under, pull it under, and give the head a twist like so. Okay, now with that little twist on there, I'm going to grab the working yarn again. I'm kind of holding it with my pinky, I'm holding it tight so I have. A little space to work in. So I yarn over. So this is how it's looking. Yarn over and I pull it through that loop, that little X on the hook. Okay, so now I've, I've kind of formed 
a slip knot there and I'm going to tighten this that knot up okay now here's the here's the fun part I'm going to take my fingers out and see now I've got this kind of a lasso shape so I've got kind of a slip knot there I've got a working loop here and I've got this lasso with the tail coming up there here's my working yarn now now normally um, when you're just starting like say things that are going round and round you would just work into a chain but instead of working into a chain we're gonna work into this big circle so I'm gonna hold this with my thumb and my tall finger there and hold it right here as if as if this is a chain I'm gonna go in the loop yarn over and let's see what am I doing am I sorry uh, actually I'm gonna uh, well let's see I'm gonna single crochet yeah so I'm gonna go in yarn over pull up so I've got two loops on the hook and then yarn over again pull through there's a single crochet now I'm gonna chain six so I'm gonna yarn over and just pull it through the loop one two three four five six so it forms this chain coming off of that magic loop okay now I want to work that and then I'm going to repeat that pattern um, for a total of six times so five more times so I'm going to hold I'm going to again I'm going to hold the magic loop so that I can have a little space to work in here I'm going to go through the magic loop yarn over pull through so I've got two loops on the hook yarn over and pull through both there's my single crochet and then I'm going to chain six one two three four five six and see how I'm working my fingers up the chain to hold it and then I'm gonna go back to holding magic loop I'm gonna go through the magic loop make another single crochet and then I'm gonna chain six again one two three four five six and then I'm gonna grab the magic loop again go through the loop yarn over pull through keeping it kind of snug there and kind of you know you can kind of bend that magic loop to be smaller which it makes it easier to work with uh, pull that loop through okay and you can add, and you can see that these are going to be the petals of my little flower once I I'm going to cinch up I'm going to pull this tail when I'm done with making this six times and it's going to cinch these together to make the petals all right so let's do that chain one two three four five six and again go through the magic loop make our single crochet and then one two three four five six and okay so one two three four five one more so we know one two three six and then we're going to then for the la uh, that was the, the all the repeats now we're going to finish by doing another single crochet to make that petal all right so that's what it's looking like so far and now we're going to close we're going to cinch the beginning tail so I'm going to grab that little tail right here I'm going to pull it tight I'm going to pull it and it's going to cinch the, the magic loop holes nice and small okay I'm just going to I'm going to hold it over here pull it like that okay so there's my flower so next next thing we need to do is fasten off fasten ah, fasten off so and then give it about I don't know about eight inches to sew to the plant and then here's our working loop we're gonna pull that cut in through like so all right and then so you've got these two ends you've got the tail and the sewing end the beginning tail and uh, I'm just gonna make a little uh, overhead knot here to secure it so it won't pull out again 
Okay, so there's another little flower. And now we're going to make some little red stamens in the middle of the flower. Alright, so we're going to grab the red yarn and so that this uh, this twisty stuff, you go to the end where this is looped over, you pull the two loops apart and unwind it. You're going to find a cut end. You're not going to need very much. You're going to need about 10 inches of the yarn. There we go. There's an end right there. Okay. So I'm going to cut off about 10 inches. Now you're going to need the needle that came with the kit. Need the needle. Okay. This is a nice little bag that's got the little adhesive strips so your bits and bobs won't get lost. Okay, and then we're going to take it. This is how I like to thread a needle. I hold the, the cut end between my thumb and finger, and then I take the eye of the needle and kind of wiggle it over the end until it pops through, and then I can pull it through. And then I'm going to overlap it about four inches. Okay, and we are going to come up through the underside of the flower, and we'll leave a, a we'll leave about three inches on the underside so that we can fasten that off. And then I'm going to put over my finger like that to form a loop, and then I'm going to come back again. I'm going to come down through, keeping that loop, and then I'm going to. While keeping that loop, I'm going to come to the other side and just take another stitch. And I'm going to go through that loop, which is kind of going to be an overhand knot. Yeah, that's a little odd looking. Let's see if we can. There we go. So I'm coming through that loop so that it will, that it will um, secure this end. Alright, and... I'm going to come back up. So this is the top side. And here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. So I want three little stamens. So I'm going to cut this end, like so, the working end. And then I'm going to cut that loop. So there's three stamens. And they're kind of long. So I can trim them to, you know, to whatever I like. So maybe I'll trim about to three quarters of an inch, you know. See how I like that? That's pretty good. Maybe I might trim them shorter. We'll see. And then you're going to want to secure. Um, make sure this this guy's not secure. So let's see how we're going to secure that guy. I probably should have secured it at the beginning on the first stitch. But I'm going to take my needle and just do another overhand knot with that. on the underside so that it won't come loose. There we go. And I'm going to leave this here so and then I'll weave it into the when I'm uh, sewing it onto the plant I can weave these in. These uh, ends in. So there's my little flower. It's going to go on top. Okay. Let's see what's next. I think we're going to start the pot. And Let's grab our hook and oh, let's clean this tidy this stuff up. Okay, we don't need that. We are gonna grab this orangey kind of terracotta colored yarn. Let's pop that twist loose like so. Now this is a lot of yarn, and it's gonna I think it's gonna get tangled up if you try just working straight from this hank of yarn. So I recommend actually winding it into a ball before you get started. And I'll show you how to do that. So this is going to be in a loop once you, well, come on, focus for me. There we go. There's, there's a loop. We're going to find our cut ends. 
There's one of the ends. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna swap the camera angle. Hang on a second. Let me do that. How do I do that? Just a moment. Let me pause. Okay, so now I'm gonna see. I've got this untwisted hank of yarn. Um, if you're if you've got a friend that can hold it like this while you're winding your ball, that's ideal. Um, but if you're on your own, I, I just like to put it over my knee like so. You could also put it maybe over, you know, I don't know, chair or something. But yeah, just put, I'm just gonna put it over my knee. And then, so I take two fingers of my non-dominant hand, my left hand, uh, I just start wrapping it around on the ends and then pulling it off of my knee as I go like this. So that it doesn't get tangled as I'm pulling it off. And so I'm wrapping it like this, wrap, wrap, wrap. And once it gets to about the size of a, oh, I don't know, let's see, it's a little bit smaller than a, or a plum, I guess. Maybe a large cherry, about, you know, like that. Huh. Once your fingers start to turn purple on the ends, pull it off and it's going to hold it together like so, and then go across it the other way, like this. And kind of a football shape. And just keep winding, winding, winding. And here's your, you're going to make your ball that way. And then, you know, just kind of turn directions every once in a while so it kind of evens out the, the ball. Okay. Alright, so I'm just going to pause and cut ahead to my finished winded ball.